Hello, my name is Peter Mabry. Um, I'm going to talk about some aspects of my bookmaking practice through three books I've made in the past year. Uh, the Moderns and Images or Shadows, both published by the Irish Museum of Modern Art, and Of, which is published by Gall Editions. In my book work, I'm interested in form giving. I'm interested in how books are fictionalizations of their content and in the fixed view that they present, albeit sometimes a complex one. In Of, which I wrote with Tom de Puer, we talk of exhibition publications as fictions. As a collection of essays and pictures, they fabricate an image of the work. More chimera than a souvenir, they travel slowly, and many see a book that never saw the show. The first book which we're looking at now is The Moderns, the arts in Ireland from the 1900s to the 1970s. It was published to accompany a major exhibition at the Irish Museum of Modern Art. It included painting and sculpture, design, architecture, music, film, photography and books. For this book, the material was handed over to me with the pre-selection of images having been made and a broad notion of presenting works chronologically. I received final texts for the 11 essays, some of which prescribed illustrations to accompany them. The basic structure of the book was arrived at in conversation with the editors, but essentially I was charged with the management of a lot of content and of making something beautiful. The Moderns is 596 pages with end papers and an eight-page dust jacket around hard covers wrapped in embossed linen. It was printed in a run of 1,500 copies and each each copy weighs three kilos. The same stock is used throughout for text and illustrations, but with a one-side gloss stock for the end papers to match the gloss of the dust jacket, and with introduction and exhibi exhibition checklist printed on uncoated sections to top and tail the book. After printing all sections with process inks, three spot colours and a UV varnish were applied in various combinations in a separate pass. For group exhibitions, there tend to be three strategies for the design of a cover. A single image to represent everything, a, a no image solution, so text or graphics or both, or a multi-image solution, possibly based on a grid. And a grid solution was preferred here, and this by default suggested a grid which I then employed for the inside of the book. The page is evenly divided into four by four rectangular units with subdivisions to determine margins for text and images. Each essay is derived from the same grid, but laid out differently, reflecting the requirements of the content. In establishing a grid, I was interested not so much in uniformity, but in the resultant variation and inconsistencies generated by the content. It provided a useful rationale for what amounts to some slightly eccentric placing of elements and was employed sufficiently loosely to allow variations suggested by the material. I was struck in doing this by Robert Irwin's differentiation between logic and reason, favouring reason as the processing of our interface with our own subjective being. And while a grid implies that logic is at work, for me, ultimately, page layout is determined by taste, intuition, reference, convention, form, white space, and the inner dynamics of an image. This is Images or Shadows, uh, Jared Byrne. And this paragraph about Jared is from the Listen Gallery website. Jared Byrne's work exploits the ambiguities inherent in historicizing the legacy of cultural forms from theater to photography or to magazines, all of which have traditionally been accorded the role of representing society to itself. The work is pri primarily lens-based in film, video, and photography. The film and video projects often involve reconstructing particular historically charged conversations originally published in magazines from the 1960s to the 1980s, with the intention of testing the cultural present against the present evoked in a magazine article from the recent past. Byrne has worked on a number of projects with actors and sets in gallery spaces which test the nominal historical distinctions between sculpture and set design, acting and non-acting, and spectacle and spectator. Images of Shadows was published to accompany the Jared Byrne survey show Through the Eyes at the Irish Museum of Modern Art. From our early conversations, one of the reference points Jared mentioned was secondary school textbooks, like those published by Irish publisher Folans. 
the kind of books I or Jared would have used at school. In fact, I worked off memory here rather than referring to actual material as Folan's current publications, unsurprisingly, don't correspond at all with my memory of them from school. So in a way, the design is based partially on the memory of a textbook. This book is 230 by 260 millimetres portrait running to 224 pages with a soft cover. It uses an autobind where the cover board in the spine is not attached to the book block and it's cold glued both to allow the book to lay flat. The cover was printed processed two sides onto 350 gram true card and matte laminated and spot gloss varnished on the outside. The book block was printed processed throughout onto 150 gram claro bulk and 1,250 copies were made. The book draws on Jared's extensive body of work and includes many works that did not form part of the exhibition, so it is a book as distinct from any form of catalogue. For this book, I was supplied nine completed essays and a hard disk full of pretty much all of the images Jared had in his archive. From some discussion about what we might do, Jared and I agreed a running order for the essays. I then reviewed all of the material and made a selection from this, a combination of survey and intuition. While making some attempt to be comprehensive, I selected the images I was drawn to. There are many image typologies, video stills or grabs, production stills, photographic works, some of which are taken by a third party but commissioned or directed by Jared, photographic works of reference material, i.e. the source text of some of his video works, Photographic works of locations, location scouting images, some by third parties, installation documentation with video, photographic images or text, staged images such as a monitor in a studio or a production suite, reference images, photos of writers uh, and makers relevant to the work, reference works, paintings, photographs or film works by others. I made a first draft of the book on the basis of my understanding of the concerns of the work and the potential within the book to explore them. This draft became the basis of our next discussion and the book concept solidified from this. The design of the book then continued in a series of conversations and revisions as we added, altered and recombined elements. Most of the essays discussed many of the same works and these overlaps in focus suggested repetition and variation of images. Hence, different images from many of the same projects recur throughout the book in different combinations or juxtapositions, prompting cross-referencing and interconnections. On one level, the images run through the book as illustrations to the text, intermittently breaking out into visual essays reminiscent of ways of seeing. In another reading, the texts serve as illustration or backdrop to the material of the book, the work itself. The text as a type of material offers a logic, logic, or I prefer a reasoning, to blurring the distinction between projects and merging image sources. The book is self-reflexive in that the staging or restaging of events, the work itself, the staging of the presentation for installation and exhibition, and the staging of the presentation of the book itself are intertwined. The book, while exploring the material, is using the material to explore the possibilities of the book. Many many of the images make explicit reference to the process of making and to their own making. A staged photograph of a monitor in a production studio displays a video still from a work showing a close-up of a couple participating in a group discussion. On the opposite page, an installation view, perhaps also staged, shows a couple viewing another work by Jared Byrne on a monitor in a gallery space. A quote within one of the essays is transplanted out of the text and is presented graphically on a single page, the essay itself literally becoming image and mirroring mirroring the wall works of several gallery installations. The type is based on a simple three-column structure throughout. Many fonts are used reflecting the variety of authorship. They draw on an uncertain vocabulary of the 1960s to the 1980s while evincing the 21st century. Um, The the type made me think a little bit about joy division. Uh, The book is filled with fonts that some time ago I probably would never have considered using, uh, in the same way that, for me now, joy division sounds much better nowadays, perhaps defined or described by what surrounds their music now. 
During the print run of this book, a run-on was made of one, of, uh, of one side of a 16-page signature from the book. These eight imposed pages on one side of the sheet were later printed on the reverse with notes and a cover page and folded down to, a form, to form the accompanying 16-page exhibition guide with colour bars, crop marks and perforated edges left apparent. Of was written by, by was co-written by me with Tom Dupuer. It is published by our imprint, Gall Editions, and is being launched next Thursday, the 22nd of March, when a copy of the book is donated to the Irish Architectural Archive, alongside an additioned copy of a chair and other artefacts from the exhibition entitled Of the Blackham and Mar, which I co-curated at the Venice Architectural Biennale in 2010. The Venice exhibition itself comprised an oversized, approximately A2 page size, 80-page unbound book for free distribution, free distribution in an edition of 9,000 copies, forming stacks on five oak subfloors in the, in the San Gallo Oratory uh, off Piazza San Marco in Venice. The exhibition subsequently toured to four venues around Ireland where it was reconfigured each time. The exhibition book presented reproductions of drawings and photographs from the architect's archive, a photographic essay and written commentary. Visitors to the show were invited to hand collate the sections and take away a copy. Of is a reader to this exhibition and the book. It is in many ways the antithesis of the book about which it is speaking. It is small, portable and practical, more bookish than the one it refers to. By contrast, it shows the exhibition book to be an undoing of the making of a book, where of, in its unpicking of the rationale, manifests itself as a much more conservative proposition. It is 128 pages plus soft covers, 148.5 by 196 millimetres portrait, which is a truncated A size, with 94 illustrations printed throughout in tritones onto 135 gram Furioso and 400 gram Monk and Pure. The book is thread sewn in sections, covers drawn on and cold glue. The run was 500 copies, and like the other titles I've shown, it was printed by Marcel Meesters of MM Art Book Printing and Repro. Of is a colophon, a book about a book, a description of the making of an exhibition and the making of itself, so in part it is a meta book. It is a fictionalization of an exhibition and a fictionalization of itself. It is structured through the following essays colophon, books, paper, ink, gold, archive, souvenir, edition, reproduction, graphics, volume, scale. Furniture, light, orientation, reading, installation, people, provenance. While the design and, the pr and production of the book ultimately fell into my hands, I would regard its design only as an embedded layer of its production. The writing, editing and the making of the book were an integrated collaborative process. As authors, we made a conscious decision at a certain point in the process to make the writing visual, to regard the writing of the text as part of the mating, making of a book object. Instead of, instead of writing in isolation and later considering its visual form, the visual presentation was developed in conjunction with the writing and images were considered as part of this process. Each essay reviews an aspect of the form giving of the exhibition. Images and text and the visual form of the book shaped each other and the elements were edited or rearranged in relation to each, image and text being given equal weighting. The text dismantles the conceits and constructs of the exhibition at Venice and of the book itself, and this from the text. Pacing, rhythm and cut, structure, repetition, and the dynamics of scale are all affected by layout and the act of page turning. Silence or noise are reflected in the complexity or clarity of a page, and each page turn itself is punctuated by the sound of paper. In early conversations with the printer, uh, we discussed how to produce a book that looked neither contemporary nor dated, but one that might convey a feeling of having always existed. The layouts are largely conventional, with a single text block hanging from the top of the page and biased towards the gutter. Folios and essay titles are centred off the width of the page to cause a slight misalignment with the text block. Aside from this, the pages follow no real grid and image size modulates throughout so that there is a general non-alignment 
in part to convey a feeling of the gathering of an assortment of images rather than a coherent imposition of order onto the content. The type usage is simple, a combination of, a slightly, of slightly incongruous serifs from the 19th and 20th centuries. Uh, the body text is a little oversized, a note in the text itself uh, refers to the type used in the exhibition publication. Um, it refers to the way in which a typeface designed in one era be- may become synonymous with another. It uses the Gerard Byrne book as an example. Since all type leans heavily on the past, an unclear timeline is inevitable. Rockwell from the 1930s, Gloucester, Optima and Universe from the 50s, or Sabon from the 60s, might be employed to convey an unfixed 1960s to 1980s vocabulary while simultaneously evincing the early early 21st century. Of, too, has a kind of self-awareness, both in the discussion of the content, which references the process of its own making, and in its bookishness expressed in its detailed colophon, the signature numbering at the base of each page, and even in the tritones themselves, which are printed with 300 lines per inch screens, giving the images a slight conspicuousness. One of the effects of printing with tritones is that the mid-tonal detail of the image is dramatically opened up or amplified, giving an almost hyperreal characteristic. Fact, truth, or very similitude, and the authority of same are considered throughout the text and the presentation of the content. A photograph of images or shadows on press stands in for a non-press image of the Venice exhibition book. The book opens with a Caro painting which hangs at Dublin City Gallery, the Hugh Lane, and closes with a 19th century photograph of the same view that shows Caro's view from the Villa Medici to have been impossible.